What's going on everybody? Mortem here bringing you an updated version of my Stormbringer build for Horns of the Reach. So a lot of this stuff is going to remain the same, but with some of the changes in Horns of the Reach, I wanted to go ahead and go over it. Uh, most The biggest changes are hands down going to be the gear. I'm going to leave timestamps down below in the description in case you want to jump around to them. Uh, but to that end, I am going to just quickly gloss over uh, all of the information that way you know if you're watching this video for the first time rather than the original one you'll still know most of it so starting with uh, race attributes uh, standing stone all that uh, we're doing a 52 magicka 12 health split some of the other common ones are 60 and 4 or just all 64 into magicka you see that as well uh, personally I just like a little more health that this particular split gives now, as for race, we are playing a dark elf. However, they are technically not the uh, min-max one. You actually want high elves for that because high elves, in the end, are going to get 2% extra shock damage and 1% more max magicka than dark elves will for this particular build. So, with that said, uh, moving down here to the standing stone, I recommend using one of two, really, either the thief or the shadow. Now, as you can see, with the thief, that'll wind up putting our spell crit right around 75%. If you switch it out for the shadow, your uh, spell crit winds up dropping down to around 65%. Uh, to be honest with you, I can't tell much of a difference in DPS uh, one way or the other, so it really just boils down to what you prefer. I like the thief. Um, the damage is a little more reliable while the shadows is a little more procky because it's increasing critical damage as opposed to just the critical happen happening anyway. So there's that and with that we're going to move on to our armor and weapon setup, all that stuff. So starting out with the weapons, I recommend two lightning staffs of Julianos. I got a little lazy with the back bar one, I haven't actually updated it yet. Uh, that said, Lightning Staff of Julianos, you want it to do Shock Damage Enchant and the Infused trait. Now the reason you want Infused is because with Horns of the Reach they actually buffed Infused to in reduce the cooldown of the enchantment by 50% and increase the effect by 30% uh, on a gold quality weapon, mind you. Anything less than that it's a bit smaller. Now the reason that's really good is because A, we're doing a crap ton of Shock Damage as you can see, but more importantly Shock Damage applies the status effect Concussed. And if you apply Concussed, uh, what that essentially does is apply Minor Vulnerability, which increases your damage by 8% against that target. And with the enchantment cooldown and you hitting them constantly if you're light attacking, uh, it'll do a lot of damage. So uh, for Jewelry, I actually recommend running Mother's Sorrow, uh, because you can get it in Jewelry. Uh, as you can see, I only have the... Uh, purple versions of that. Uh, the gold ones are a little harder to come by. All, most of our armor is, however, gold. Uh, and then from there, you're going to want two pieces of armor being uh, Mother's Sorrow as well. Uh, as long as it's not head or shoulder, you're pretty much good to go. Um, well, actually, shoulder would be fine with this as well. And then everything else is going to be uh, Julianos besides the helm. Uh, whichever armor pieces you pick, it's not going to make too much of a difference. But So as you can see, uh, we have the full set of Juliano. So that's going to give us max magicka, extra spell crit, and just base spell damage, which is always really good. And for the helm, we're actually just wearing Grothar's Mask for the one piece set. Now, ideally, this would be Divine's traded as well, just like all of the other pieces. However, uh, I haven't been lucky enough with those drops on my live server guy here. So I've unfortunately only been able to use the sturdy, but you're not going to notice that much of a difference. Now, I wouldn't recommend bringing that up to gold until you have a Divine's version, obviously. So, from there, uh, for this back bar, it is worth noting that the enchantment, uh, and the enchantment, obviously, you want it to be shock damage still. However, the trait, I mean, it doesn't really matter what that is. Like, I'm running sharpened now, but we're not going to be on this bar very often. So, like, that trait really doesn't matter. Use whatever you want. As long as the front bar is infused and all of your armor is divines, you're pretty much good to go. Now, it is worth noting I'm only running, uh one piece of medium armor, but you would want to do the 5-5-1-1 five, five, uh, five, split for the Undaunted passives. However, this guy hasn't done enough dungeons to get all of that, so he's not uh, getting the full benefit from that anyway. But ideally, you would want five of these to be light, uh, one of them to be medium, and the other one to be heavy. Um, and that is to get the passive effect off of your Undaunted skill line. So, that is all of our armor. Um, I highly recommend using this setup. It does a crap ton of damage, as you will see later. The skills haven't really changed either. 
but I am going to go over them really fast for the people who might be watching this for the first time, like I said earlier. First of all, we're going to be using Bound Aegis, which increases physical and spell resistance by a little bit, but more importantly increases our Max Magicka by 8%. From there, we're going to be using Inner Light, which is going to be giving us more spell critical on that front bar. Uh, from there, we're using Crystal Fragments. I recommend using this most of the time. However, in certain situations against, uh, for instance, the In Dungeons of Bosses, you might consider changing it out to Dark Conversion, which will uh, basically serve as your resource regeneration. I would say that I haven't necessarily needed to do that a lot, but if you're having trouble with it or you don't have all your armor together yet, uh, it can definitely be worthwhile to drop crystal fragments and that way you can at least maintain the damage off of the other things you're using. As you can see, uh, this is actually unbuffed uh, with food that's actually uh, 40 to 41k and I just personally have not had a problem with it running out so long as I am remembering to heavy attack every once in a while. And then from there we're using Shot Clinch off the Destruction Staff skill line. Uh, it hits them, does a dot over 8 seconds, uh, stuns the target which is pretty good. And then we're using Crushing Shock. Uh, I use Crushing Shock mostly because I, 9 out of 10 I'm playing by myself and Crushing Shock is better for solo stuff. Uh, you can definitely use, I believe the other one is called Force Pulse. It'll do more damage overall but won't stun anybody. Uh, then from there we're using the ultimate off of the Destruction Staff, uh, Thunderous Rage. Uh, just does an insane amount of damage and because we're using the Lightning version it actually lasts for two more seconds. And then on our back bar, we're using Bound Aegis again so it stays up. We're using Blockade of Storms. Uh, now this is important because it will set our concussed enemies that we're hitting with lightning damage as all lightning shock damage will apply concussed or has the possibility to. So because of that, Blockade of Storms will set concussed enemies off balance and because everyone is more than likely concussed already, you're basically just guaranteeing that you're setting enemies off balance and that's important when I show you the champion points here in just a minute. But Blockade of Storms is probably the single most important skill on here. And then after we lay that down, where you lay Lightning Flood down on top of it because it does an insane amount of damage. And then from there, I like to use Hardened Ward just for a little extra survivability and Power Surge, which is going to uh, heal us every time we deal Critical Strike. But more importantly, it's also going to increase our spell damage by 20%. And because it's a Sorcerer ability, we get 2% uh, extra spell damage for just having it slotted, which is uh, one of the Sorcerer passives. And then from there we are using our Suppression Field Ultimate as a Sorcerer. And what Suppression Field does is in addition to the negate magic uh, field that it creates, in addition to that it also stuns all of the enemies and damages all of them every 0.5 seconds it's up. So because it's up for 12 seconds, if they're under it the entire time, that means you're hitting them for a total of 24 times over 12 seconds. It does an insane amount of damage, as you'll see just a little later in this video. From here, that's going to wrap up all of the skills, obviously. Um, I didn't go into too much detail. If you want that, I mean, feel free to watch the other video or actually go through and explain all that stuff. But suffice to say, you lay down your AoEs, Blockade of Storm and Lightning Flood. Uh, make sure you keep Power Surge up. And then you'll switch to this bar. I like to open with Shot Clinch to get that dot going and then use Force Pulse. Now these two spells right here are pretty much the only thing that are going to proc Crystal Fragments which will uh, basically make our next Crystal Fragments deal 10% more damage and cost 50% less Magicka. That's only really going to proc off of these two. And then just keep your AoEs up, Power Surge, alternate between these two and you'll do an insane amount of damage. Now I am of course going to show you what that actually looks like here in this next video. Uh, that said, it is worth noting that this build does very well in solo, mind you, but what it really seems to excel at is dungeons. I, ha I don't really play Trials too much, so I can't speak too much to what that does. I know Magicka Sorcerers are pretty popular in that, however, though, so, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. Dungeons, however, it rocks the house. So as you can see here, you just lay down your dots. If you can hit su Suppression Field uh, like I do here, You'll just do an insane amount of damage, as you can see all of it flaring up on all of these trash mobs right here. Now, when it comes to clearing trash, this build is amazing. Uh, single or single target, rather. Um, it seems like you lose a little bit of your DPS, and I would tell you the best way to counteract that is... And you have to watch your Magicka while you're doing it. If you're going to run out, this is where it's going to be. 
Um, in addition to laying down your dots and keeping power surge up, uh, the main thing you want to do is uh, keep shock clinch up and then basically just use uh, force pulse or crushing shock, whichever one you're using, and alternate that with light attacks and then just uh, hit with crystal fragments when it's up. Now it's worth noting that when you do that, you're going to burn through an insane amount of magic uh, super fast. So you're probably going to want to wait till the execute uh, phase of the boss to actually do that. But single target, that's pretty much the best way to push through the damage. So I would tell you the only real difficult thing about this build, and I would argue it's all pretty easy honestly compared to most of the ones I've played, is uh, kind of learning how to keep all of your dots up as well as power surge. Uh, that's really what is going to drag your DPS down, is not keeping those things up on yourself. So, uh, I certainly hope you enjoyed this uh, admittedly kind of quick update for the Stormbringer for the Horns of the Reach patch. Uh, like I said, only a couple minor changes, uh, mostly in the armor section of it. Uh, that said, I certainly hope you enjoy the build. If you do, please subscribe, but thank you so much for watching either way, and I hope you have a great day.